All right, so I have a weird conundrum here. Uh, and this is one of these things that you'd think I'd think of ahead of time, what with the fact that I have a number of advanced degrees in electrical engineering. But as I like to tell people, electrical engineering and being an electrician are not the same thing. So I'm in my pipe studio. I've right, been in here before. And I'm not super happy with uh, the airflow of this vacuum cleaner here, especially when I'm using the sanding, the downdraft box. Right, when I watch the videos on YouTube of people that have made these that are even bigger than these, um, you know, they hook them up to their shop vacs. They just seem to work way better than mine. And so I started to investigate. It's a, it's a pretty short run, and right? I'm not going through a massive amount. Yeah, yeah, the swirly whirly is gonna lose some. But I look up the specs on this, on this um, rigid vacuum here, and they don't quite make that exact one anymore, I don't think. But there's one, but I looked up the specs for this exact one. And this exact unit only draws 64 cubic feet per, per minute. Now that's low. Um, the one I have in the garage draws around 140 cubic feet per minute. And, you know, you can get them that go up to 200. Uh, they cost $200 to get 200 cubic feet per minute, and it's a stainless steel thing, and you got to mail order it. But they do exist. By the way, i got a TV in up here uh, to use as my monitor when I'm filming. But I'm not, I'm not doing that right now. Um, so I said, oh, goodness. You know, I started looking at the specs of these higher-end ones that have, you know, 100 well over 100, close to 200. So the stainless steel guy, you know, is 200 cubic feet per minute. It's $200 and it's, you got to mail order it. But in stock, they have like a $100 version of it that's 164 cubic feet per minute. I'm like, oh, well, 164 cubic feet per minute versus, versus 64. This could very well be my problem. So I said, well, I better check. I'm running this, you know, off of an outlet. Uh, and I assume I've got 15 amps for this room, right? Because that's your standard household outlet. Uh, well, that guy, I, I got out my current measuring thing, which I've already put away, so you're not going to see it. That guy draws a continuous 7, 6.9 to 7.1 amps. We'll call it 7 amps pretty much continuously, which matches very well the specs for it on the website. It's supposed to draw about seven amps. The, the um, 164 cubic feet per minute one draws 12.2 amps or so, a little over 12 amps. They go, oh gosh, a little over 12 amps on a 15 amp circuit. But I also got to run the sander and the sander is supposed to, according to the, the label on it, it's supposed to draw six amps, so you know that's 18 amps. 15 amp circuit shouldn't work, um, but I figured I'd measure that too. And and this guy draws about four amps when not under load, but when I start sanding and put it under a load, yeah, shoots right up to six amps. So both of these guys are in their uh, standard, I guess, labeled configuration, right? They're they're drawing the right amount of amperage. Um, but I had been running, I had been running the vacuum off of here, this outlet over here, and uh, the table, the belt sander here, and really the whole workbench setup off of that outlet back there. Because, I don't know, I wanted to spread out the outlets. Uh, plus the, this, there, there's three things that I have to plug in, because there's the, there's the power strip I put across the back, and there's the power strip here, which I thought of daisy chaining to the other one, but I didn't. And then the vacuum. So three things I got to plug in. And, and of course, you know, all these lights and everything go into the power strip and the Dremel. The tools like the Dremel and this thing are going into that back power strip and the lights, the TV, you're going into the side power strip, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, so I said, well, let me go check that it's actually a 15 amp circuit. So I've got my little circuit locator here. Right? You plug this in and it inject some sort of a waveform into the power line then you go to your uh you go to your um breaker box and you move this up and down and it beeps and flashes the light when it gets to the right circuit and i started out over here and i'm like okay 
I find that circuit, it's a completely unlabeled breaker uh, in my breaker box. I have five or six unlabeled breakers. It's not good, but that's how it is in any house, right? Uh, it's a 20 amp breaker. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I've actually got 20 amps in here. Um, let me make sure that that's the same circuit. So I do the same thing. That's on a different circuit. That's on a 15 amp breaker that's labeled basement outlets. I'm like, huh, that's weird. So, so, you know, this guy, previous owner was going to make a wine cellar in here. Probably was thinking about a refrigerator or something, you know, some sort of powered device. It's like, did he run a dedicated 20 amp line just to this outlet? But that outlet is, you know, was already here. It's on the rest of the basement. You know, maybe they, they came in and they put this wall in later. You know, I don't know, right? Uh, I can't, the, the guy unfortunately has passed away that I bought the house from. I can't call him up and ask him. Um, it'd be in probably bad taste to call up his wife and ask. So, so it's a mystery. But I said, well, on the other side of this wall is a storage room. And in that storage room, I have a big, uh, a big stand up dedicated freezer, right? So I say, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the, uh, the storage room and I'm going to do the same trick with the little circuit locator. And I'm going to see, you know, is cause there's an outlet, I believe right on the other side of this wall in the other room. Right. So like, well, it would be silly t to put an outlet on this side of the wall on one circuit and the outlet on the other side of the wall in another circuit. But you know, these, <laughs> these two cir oops, I'm pointing and you're looking at me. These two guys are only four feet apart and they're on different circuits. So I go, and the one on the other side of the wall here is the same circuit as this, as this. So, so, well, that's no good. That whole storage room, I've got, I've got a, a chest freezer. In, well, it's not a chest freezer, but an upright freezer in there. You know, is that on my 20 amp circuit? And then I got to figure out how much amperage that thing draws so that like if the compressor that kicks on while I'm in here, I don't blow the circuit. And I go over to the other end of the storage room and I check what circuit the freezer's plugged into, and it's that circuit, right? So it really does seem like somebody came in and added this wall and added a single circuit in here, a dedicated 20 amp line that goes to this outlet and the outlet on the other side of this wall. And everything else in the basement here is on it, well, I don't know if everything else in the basement, I didn't measure all the other rooms, but you know, the rest of this room and the rest of the other storage room are on a different circuit, a 15 amp circuit that's actually labeled. So, so that's what it looks like right now. But so I've decided I'm gonna take my tools and my vacuum, and I'm gonna plug them in here to the 20 amp circuit, because as far as I can tell, there's nothing else, well, I know for sure there's nothing else plugged in in that storage room other than uh, the freezer, because it's really just shelves with boxes, you know, the, the, uh, the, what's stored on the other side of this wall where this outlet is, is our Christmas decorations, uh, you know, in big boxes. So now I'm thinking, gosh, now I've got, I've got 20 amps for this instead of 15. Uh, and I, I, you know, this needs six. Um, I still don't think I want to buy the 12 amp guy, uh, because 12 and six you know, 18, that puts me at 90% of the rating and you really don't want to run at 90% of the rating for extended periods of time. And technically you can do it. It's just not a good idea. Um, especially if you have no idea. I mean, whoever installed this did not uh, label the breaker. So probably not a licensed electrician, I'm guessing. Because the, the code requires the label, the, the breakers to be labeled. And I've had electricians in here adding circuits for air conditioners and stuff and, and a hot tub. And, and yeah, they label the heck out of everything, right? And their the code inspector comes, you know, to sign off on the permit and checks that the breakers are labeled. That's one of the things they do. But, you know, all half of this house, the rest of the house doesn't have labeled breakers. So, so you know, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, that's what happens when you buy a used house, I guess. Now you get a better deal on a used house, but you, you run into these fun little mysteries. So, so I've moved my power tool over here. So now I've got two things plugged in here. The only thing I've got plugged in there is, you know, the LED light here, the little fluorescent tube here, uh, and that TV there. Um, and I measured it with my little, my little amperage tool, and it measured zero. 
I even put it on the 10X gain. It measured zero, dead nut zero, with, you know, that light on, this light on, and that TV on. Now, I don't believe it's zero, but apparently, um, and this is supposed to measure uh, hundredths of amps. So, uh, I, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you there. Um, it's apparently wrong, but, but it doesn't draw much. You know, very easy to get the six to four to six amps off of this, very easy to get seven amps off of that. The rest of this measures zero. And I'm not super worried that a little LED bulb and a fluorescent bulb and a TV are going to blow the circuit for the basement. Um, that's just sort of the kinds of stuff you, you would plug into an outlet, right? Nothing unusual. So I'll keep the Dremel and I'll, I'll keep the sander and I'll upgrade this. I'll probably upgrade this to the, um, the uh, 144 cubic feet per minute model, um, which is still more than double than the 64 I have here. Uh, there seems to be there seems to be a pretty big amperage difference between the 160 to 200 um, CFM guys and the 144 CFM guy. If I remember correctly, the 144 CFM guy only pulls nine amps, um, right? So nine there, seven here. I'm at 16 amps. It's a 20 amp circuit. I've got, you know, 80%. That's fine. You can run at 80% to full capacity all day long, right? That's that's sort of right within the sweet spot of the design parameters. So that's where we are. I really did not expect to have two. I've got two outlets in this room and they're on different circuits. Weird, but I'm glad I checked. I'm glad I checked because I was like, ah, you know, I really am stuck with this 64 cubic foot per minute guy because I can't find anything. You know, if this sander is seven amps, I don't have a lot of room on a 15 amp circuit to put a big vacuum that runs simultaneously, especially given that they both run continuously simultaneously, you know, for I sand, I can sand for 30 minutes nonstop, right? So you don't want to be right at the limit of your circuit for 30 minutes nonstop. And then, of course, you know, you have a fire and the house burns down and you're trapped in the basement. That would suck. <laughs> anyway, uh, Turkey B with an interesting check-in, but I don't know what's going on. Out.